For those of you who've been around the channel for a while, you know that I recently got a deal with Miller's Milling to put a retail display with my hairpin legs in their showroom. One of the other things Miller's Milling wants me to do is make a slab surfacing machine. What you're looking at here is the beginnings of a panel saw that I began to make uh, years ago. And it's, it's pretty dirty and, and pretty sticky right now. But uh, I think if I clean this up and rework it a little bit, this can now be the basis for the slab surfacing machine. We'll start by stripping off this saw and cleaning the thing up. Now before we get too far, I do want to point out that I built this thing with nothing but a hand drill, a hacksaw, some files, and my old stick welder. Okay, now once you see the way this thing is made, we've got these U-bolts with these rollers on them, but then here there's a nylon rubbing block, and then these two come together, and it, it makes a nice smooth surface so this thing can slide along. So I've been dragging this thing around for 20 years, hoping to find a use for it, and I finally have. But uh, in that 20 years, this has gotten pretty rough. It's, uh, it's got some rust on it and stuff. Um, this is filthy. L look how thick the dust is on it. It's uh, pretty bad. So I need to clean this up. That's next. Okay, I cleaned this up and painted it and wire wheeled the, the round tubes. Okay, so I scrubbed off the mill scale, off the uh, slide mechanism. Now what I need to do is uh, attach the router to the slide plate. And the way I'm going to do that is I've marked a uh, circle here from uh, the inside. And I'm going to come around here with a compass and uh, drill a bunch of holes and then connect them all and uh, file it out. Now there's another way to do that. I could use a milling machine. But, you know, I prefer to use simpler machines because a lot of people really complain when I use milling machines and, and sophisticated tools like that. Now I want to take a second to talk about center punches. This is a $5 Harbor Freight center punch. This is a $25 Rennsteig center punch. This one works way better. This one, a lot of times, doesn't work at all. So I think I'm going to use this as the drive system to power the router back and forth across its uh, little tram sled there. And uh, this is a garage door opener. And uh, take a look at this. It's, uh, it's got the motor out here. Most garage door openers have the motor back here. But the way they did this is uh, the chain carries the positive voltage and the rail carries the negative voltage. And then they control the direction from way back here. This control strategy going on here is not going to work at all. So the first thing we need to do is remove all the crap we're not going to need. Okay, so take a look at what we got. We got the line end comes here and it peels off and feeds this transformer. The transformer output is here, these two red ones, so that's, uh, I, I didn't check it yet, but it's probably 24 volts AC because that's the power of that motor. It goes into here, that's a rectifier. These are two voltage regulators and two relays. And what goes on here is this power comes through all this goes through this rectifier, gets turned into DC. Then it gets channeled through one of these voltage regulators, well, actually through both of them, but whichever relay kicks, it changes the polarity. So it sends positive out one side, and then to go a different direction, it flips it and goes sends positive out the other side. And we are not gonna need any of this. We're gonna use the transformer, I'm going to come up with another rectifier and two different relays because scavenging it off this circuit board is just going to be too much of a pain. Okay, what we'll do here is we'll disassemble this thing and then we'll cut it to fit inside the router gantry. Then we'll uh, shorten the chain and put it all back together. Okay, so one thing I know is these things here, these are the limits, but I want to see what happens in here when they come in. I, I can tell that that switch connects to these two points. Let's just read the uh, resistance across it. Okay, that's a dead short, but we'll move this in, and it breaks the circuit. This is looking pretty good. 
Now we can go through the process of tying this onto the gantry assembly. Where the lights were mounted, it's completely melted. It says max 60 watts. The bulb I pulled out was only 40, and it did this anyway. Okay, so off camera I fabbed up this bracket, and uh, this will tie into the end of the uh, rail here, and I had the original from the other end. Um, it actually came with this plastic thing, but I, I hate plastic. So, I mean, I don't hate plastic, but I don't want to use plastic for this. Now the beauty of this system is that the motor drive rides with the router and all the electronics is on the motor drive. So the only thing that has to make it to the router in the way of wiring is power. We'll run a cable chain along the top of this to take up and reel back the power. That'll take care of this part of the build. Then we can move on to the linear slide and the drive for it. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do on that yet. I have some high ambitions, but who knows, budget and simplicity may win out. Now that we have the drive installed, we need to tie the drive to the sliding carriage. And this is the piece that actually came with the drive to do that, and I think we're going to go ahead and use it. I'll make a mount out of this aluminum block to do that, and we'll just bolt that right onto the uh, slide here, and then interface to the actual connection point that's on the drive. And, uh, We'll start by uh, cutting a slot in this. I already drilled a hole in it. We'll just cut a slot in that so this thing will fit in and then we'll mount it up and see how the fit to that works. Okay, well this is what I came up with. We'll, uh, we'll take this block and we'll clamp it on there and, and drill some holes up through it, tap threads into it and bolt it on. And then this uh, part up here will attach to the uh, drive slide. Okay, so here's what I came up with. This is the, uh, this is the drive release and uh, that'll just hang. Um, but, but there's the drive connection coming down here to my uh, uh, driven connection. And now we can uh, fire it up and test it. Okay, so now we're ready to test it. And I've got my 24 volt power supply here. We know it ran on 24 volts because it said so on the motor. Um, we'll just uh, power it up and see if it rolls. And it works. And I think that speed is just right. Now there's not much left to this phase of the build. I need to mount these rollers on the end caps so they can slide down the table that I also have to build, but that's, a, that's going to be in part two. Um, then I'm going to have to build a power supply to run the garage door opener and develop a control strategy to get it to go back and forth. But since the only parts I have on hand for what remains to be done are these, that's what's next. Anyway, that kind of bugs me because I ordered these parts a month ago. They're still not here. And who knows, it might be another month before they show up. Okay, so these rollers here are going to slide along. I an uh, angle iron rail that would be on the top of the table that this whole thing sits on. And you see I've got the drive in there, it's all hooked up, it's wired in. What I don't have is the control strategy. Here's the other two rollers. There's only a couple of things left to do on this section of the build. One of which is put a box on the end to house the power supply that will power this uh, 24 volt motor and 
the 9 volt Arduino microcontroller that's going to run it. And what the microcontroller will do is it will sense when the uh, drive has gotten to one end and reverse the direction. And it will do the same when it uh, gets to the other end. And the way the control mechanism is going to work is anytime the router has power, it will automatically just go back and forth. As far as advancing the drive down the length of the slab, I haven't figured that out yet. I still have to build the table that this is going to ride on. So this is going to be a three-part video. This is part one. Part two will control the power supply and the electronics and control strategy that make this thing go back and forth. Part three will be the build of the table that this mounts on and the linear drive that I have to come up with for that. I'm pretty happy with the progress, so I'm just going to leave it right here for now. That's all for this week. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.